How do you start a gay-straight alliance in your school? Welcome everyone to Powered and Protected by Rainbows. I am of course your host, Professor Pride. And on today's show, we're going to show you how to start a gay-straight alliance at your school. But first off, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and consider supporting our show by checking out our brand new Pride Academy merchandise, available now using the link below. Anyway, on to our episode. GSA is an acronym, which stands for either Gay Straight Alliance or Gender Sexuality Alliance. These clubs are both student-led and community-based. In other words, a GSA club is similar to a student council, where the students are the ones to vote on what the club actually does during their weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly meetings. Even the frequency of your meetings is something your students get to decide. However, unlike some other clubs in school, GSA clubs take involvement from the community around you and make a huge beneficial impact on the community in return. And we're going to show you exactly how to start one. But first, let's answer the question of why a school should consider starting a GSA club. A school's top priority, far more important than the education it provides, is to ensure the safety of every child. 10% of the students in every classroom around the world are LGBTQ, and studies show these students face a wide variety of unsafe conditions in their elementary, middle, high school, and even university level schools. This includes everything from verbal abuse, physical abuse, and even discrimination from school staff members. When non-LGBTQ students use homophobic words such as faggot or dyke, or when they use our sexual orientation or gender in a derogatory form, such as gay or tranny. These words can hurt far more than expected. Sticks and stones might break my bones, but calling us names will definitely hurt us, no matter how much school administrators tell us to ignore them. On top of this, LGBTQ students are more likely to be physically abused at school than their straight and cisgender classmates. But this abuse is not limited to fellow classmates. Teachers and other staff members oftentimes discriminate against LGBTQ children through calling them names, not stopping physical abuse when it occurs, and by not teaching LGBTQ history, literature, health, or sexual education in class. And as a result of all of these factors, LGBTQ kids do not feel safe in their schools, in fact, 32% of LGBTQ students in schools which do not have a GSA club openly admit that they have missed school due to not feeling safe enough to go. But missing a few days of school pales in comparison to the 40% of LGB and more than 50% of transgender youth who seriously considered suicide in the past year. Worse yet, 48% of LGB and over 60% of transgender and non-binary youth engaged in self-harm in the past year alone. Having a GSA club has been proven to help with all of these concerns. LGBTQ students who attend a school with a GSA club are 18% less likely to hear other students or staff use homophobic or transphobic remarks they are less likely to be bullied or physically abused by classmates, LGBTQ students with a GSA club in their school are twice as likely to hear their school administrators, teachers, and staff make more positive and supportive remarks about their sexuality and their gender identity. And as a result, these students are safer in their schools and 6% more likely to attend school every day. So now that we know why every elementary, middle, high school, and university needs a GSA club, how do you go about starting one? And how many people do you need to actually start it? Now let's say for example that you are just one LGBTQ kid out there and you don't know of anyone else at your school who is also LGBTQ or an ally of the community. So maybe you feel like you can't start a club until you have a few people interested in joining. Well, you can start a club with just one person. The whole point of a GSA is to meet other LGBTQ people, discuss things, ask for advice from your peers, 
and to know that you're not alone. So if you feel alone right now, starting a GSA club will certainly help with that. Because again, that's the whole point in starting one. The first step to starting a GSA club is to read your student handbook to find the rules your school put in place for all extracurricular clubs and groups to follow. These are basic rules, such as the dress code, general behavior, and attendance requirements in order to participate in that day's after-school programs. So there aren't too many big issues here, but you definitely want to read through the handbook to ensure your club and you adhere to the rules, so your school has no reason to rethink having your club. The second step is to find a teacher or a faculty member to be your GSA club advisor. It is important to note that this advisor does not have to be LGBTQ themselves, nor do they have to know a lot about being LGBTQ. Again, most of what you do as a club is going to be student-led and community-based, but you'll want to find an advisor who is supportive of LGBTQ issues and considers themselves to be an ally of the community. Then again, if you have an openly gay or transgender teacher, that would be the first person I would suggest asking to advise your club. Next, you or your advisor will need to inform the school administration of your club being active. Now, just for a moment, I want to pause and give you some extra advice here. It is very helpful to have the school administrators on your side and willing to help you. So the nicer you are to your principal or other administration, the more receptive they will hopefully be. This will certainly come in handy if teachers, parents, community members, or the school board members themselves ever take issues with homosexual or transgender topics being discussed in school. But just in case you live in a homophobic or transphobic area, please know that no one can stop you from forming a GSA club, and no one can stop you from holding regular meetings. Not even school board members, your principal, teachers, parents, absolutely no one can stop you from starting a GSA. To find out how this is possible, we sat down with the president of the Pennsylvania Equality Project, Mr. David Moore, who was also the founding advisor to a local high school GSA club. I took our fight for our organization directly to the school board. We were approved by the principal of the school. We were approved by the school district superintendent. And then when our time came to appear before the school board, I stepped up to the mic and expressed, you do understand that based on Supreme Court precedent, it is illegal for school districts to reject one program but accept others. In other words, if they're gonna offer any programs of any kind that are extracurricular, they must accept all programs that are extracurricular. LGBT civil rights organizations have just as much right of forming and organizing in schools as do say uh, uh, the Boy Scouts or uh, a chess club after school. Here in the United States, there is a federal law called the Equal Access Act which guarantees that students have the right to form a GSA club and states that schools must treat all clubs equally. In fact, the first GSA club was started at Concord Academy in Concord, Massachusetts in November of 1988. And it is no surprise that the first GSA club was in Massachusetts because they have long been on the forefront of LGBTQ rights seeing that they were the first state to grant marriage equality and they were one of the first states to decriminalize homosexuality in the United States. But in 1988, the first lawsuit defending students' right to form a GSA club was filed. Since then, GSA clubs have prevailed in at least 17 federal EAA lawsuits. All of this means your school is not legally allowed to deny you from having a GSA club if they want to continue having any other extracurricular activity at their school. If they want their precious football team so badly, guess whose GSA club just got approval from the Supreme Court? Try fighting that one, homophobes. Next, you'll want to inform your guidance counselors, social workers, and possibly local LGBTQ organizations in your area. These individuals or groups may know of some students in your school who would be interested in joining, and they will also be able to help you advertise to fellow students while at the same time keeping your identity private. 
But the guidance counselors at your school will be able to help in other ways too. For instance, 46% of LGBTQ youth report that they wanted counseling, but were unable to receive it last year. So your counselors would be able to provide this to your students in your GSA club if they ever need it. The fifth step is to pick a meeting place. You'll want to pick a meeting room, a classroom, or an area of your school which offers some level of privacy and confidentiality. Sure, students who are open about their sexual orientation or gender identity are going to attend your meeting, and some others at the meeting will be proud allies of the community. But there will also be people wanting to attend your meeting which are still closeted. In fact, as the founding member of your school GSA club, you may still be closeted yourself, and you can ask the advisor to keep your sexual orientation or gender identity private until you feel comfortable coming out to other students. No one in the group has to know which student started the club. In fact, that is the strongest advantage you have. It is called a gay-straight alliance or a gender-sexuality alliance for a reason. And that reason is so no one who attends your meetings will be outed as gay, bisexual, pansexual, transgender, non-binary, or anything else in the LGBTQ community. One of the suggested rules for a GSA club is to never ask any other club members what their sexuality or gender is until they feel comfortable sharing with the individuals or the group. This way, closeted members of the community can join your club without feeling pressured to come out and without being outed to the whole school. Also, for this reason, we suggest discussing with your advisor about parents who could potentially not agree with their child attending such a club. You and your advisor can hopefully come up with some ideas, such as naming your club something school-related. For example, you can use your school's mascot and come up with something like Bulldog's Pride or Wildcat's Pride. To your parents, it's an after-school program talking about how to cheer on your school's sporting teams. But for the students in the club itself, Pride can be your LGBTQ Pride, just like a community Pride event would be for us. Or you can even work with another club in the school, and students can tell their parents that they will be joining the chess club or something else, when in reality they are attending your GSA club. This way, students feel safe from homophobic or transphobic families, which wouldn't approve of them attending a GSA club if they knew it was actually a GSA meeting. But once you have a meeting place picked out, the next step is to plan your first ever meeting. Perhaps during your first meeting, you may want to offer small snacks and drinks to those who attend. Some great examples of things you could do during your first ever meeting are to hold a discussion on sexual orientation or gender identity. You could hold small workshops, play some small games, and so on. Possibly the most important thing is to hold a brainstorming session to see what ideas everyone has on what they would like to see the club do during the school year. Surely you and your advisor can have goals in mind of where you would like to see the club go, but two heads are always better than one. So let your fellow club members know during every meeting that you welcome their suggestions. Just keep in mind that your first ever meeting should be more casual. That way no one feels pressured or embarrassed. If your school already has a GSA club, we also suggest to use a more casual idea for the first ever meeting of every school year so newer students feel more welcome to join. Next, you'll want to advertise your GSA club around your school. You or your advisor can submit the meeting to your school's bulletin announcements. That way it's read off during the morning or afternoon announcements during the week or so leading up to the first ever meeting. You can also post flyers around your school in high traffic areas, such as the lunchroom or above the water fountains, and so on. You can either draw your own flyers by hand or you can design something on a computer and print up a few dozen copies using your school's library printer. But as always, our Pride Academy team and I want to go above and beyond in helping you in your effort. So our professional graphic designer has come up with a customizable design for you to download for free so you can have the best looking flyers in the whole school. You can download our flyer design using the link in the description of this episode. It's completely free, customizable, and you can download and print it as many times as you need. Just make sure that before you post any flyers around your school, 
you run them by your principal first for approval. If your flyer gets defaced or taken down, please don't be discouraged. Keep putting them back up because the people who deface them are defacing school property, which is likely against the rules according to your school handbook. Not to mention the fact that by posting flyers around your school with key LGBTQ words or phrasing helps raise awareness and helps other LGBTQ students feel safer even if they never attend a single meeting. After all of this preliminary work, it's finally time for step eight and finally time for you to hold your first ever meeting. If no one attends besides you and the advisor, please don't get discouraged. Having posters around your school is more than enough to help fellow LGBTQ people feel safer in their school because they know they are no longer alone. Maybe by the second or third meeting, other people will see the group is going strong, so they'll start attending themselves. So after your first ever meeting is over, keep posting flyers around your school for every future meeting, especially for larger projects, which we'll talk about in step 10. If other people attend, we suggest starting the meeting with some introductions. Go around the room and invite everyone to introduce themselves with their name and their preferred pronouns. No matter if someone is LGBTQ or not, asking them what pronouns they would like to be addressed by allows you to be respectful, while at the same time, this doesn't out them as LGBTQ if they are still closeted. If someone is transgender, but they are still closeted, they may want to be addressed by they and them pronouns because it may take them time to trust other group members with their true gender pronouns. But a GSA club may be the first time in someone's life where they feel comfortable talking about their sexual orientation or gender identity. They may tell other group members during a meeting about their sexual orientation or true gender. While it's admirable of you to want to address them by their proper gender outside of the meetings, other students and friends may not know yet, and your friend may not want them to know yet. So keep everything you hear during a GSA club meeting private with just yourself and your advisor. This also applies to the attendance of the meeting itself. Please don't ever tell anyone who attended each meeting. Other students, friends, family members, or the staff at your school might start jumping to the wrong conclusions. Or worse yet, you could be outing someone as LGBTQ when in fact the only person who gets to decide who knows your LGBTQ and when is you. So please don't ruin that for someone else, as this could be potentially dangerous for them. As we have discussed before on this show, students who are outed as LGBTQ without their own consent to other school classmates or their family members sadly are at a much higher risk of suicide or being sent to conversion therapy camps. And for this reason, it is imperative that every meeting begins with a reminder of the ground rules. Your club should come up with ground rules called community agreements to ensure all group discussions, even if they are made privately between certain group members, are to remain safe, confidential, and respectful. In other words, what is said here stays here. Another essential ground rule is to never use assumptions or labels. This could help straight allies feel more comfortable about attending a meeting and helps closeted members feel like they won't be pressured to come out or be outed to other members of the school. Your advisor should also memorize the Trevor Project website and your national suicide prevention hotline in your country to help students at any time, whether in or out of school. For more suggestions and example community agreements, you can check out our Pride Academy GSA page linked in the description of this video. Finally, step 10 is to plan for the future. As we said in the beginning, GSA clubs are student-led but are heavily involved with the community. You can get in contact with local LGBTQ organizations and invite representatives to come to speak at an upcoming GSA club meeting or even to speak at your general school assembly. You can plan field trips to local LGBTQ organizations or landmarks like Stonewall Inn National Monument, among others. You can host a movie night to watch an LGBTQ film like Love, Simon, Pretty Boy, Closet Monster, or Boy Erased. You can add your school's name to the list of GSA clubs on local LGBTQ organization websites, 
such as the Pennsylvania Equality Project, or national groups such as the Gay, Lesbian, and Straight Education Network's Youth Program Department, and so on. This way, you can share ideas and, better yet, collaborate with other local LGBTQ GSA clubs. Maybe you can host an LGBTQ trivia day, or choose an LGBTQ author or book to read. Give everyone a month or so to complete it before hosting a meeting to discuss the book. You can invite local experts to discuss LGBTQ health and sexual education, or you can get together and watch an educational episode of Powered by Rainbows to get advice from our experts. There's plenty you can do as a GSA club, but as always, if you have any more ideas that your GSA club suggests other schools try, please comment those down below. Anyway, that's all for our episode today. If you like this video and want to support our LGBTQ education, please consider donating to the show or picking up some amazing merchandise using the link in the description. While you're down there, don't forget to like this video, comment down below your LGBTQ friendly thoughts, hit that rainbow subscribe button so you don't miss out on new episodes of the show, and share this video with others. As always, I'm your host, Professor Pride. Thank you so much for watching. This has been PBR. Have a gay day, everyone, and bye for now. Watch Powered by Rainbows Season 3, only on MHP TV.